Have you been working on anything uh, lately? Any any writing or anything like that? Anything anything fun? Hadn't been doing a lot of writing. I, you know, my my experiments that I'm doing are uh, getting closer to being to being done. And oh, I that's got a sec- exciting. Yeah, and I got a second uh, a second group. You know that are that started on them as well. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, I had a a, a very generous uh, donor that uh, dropped some money into the pot, so I could I could immediately accelerate the the work a little bit. So now we're 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 moving forward at a much faster rate. So is that a second like independent group working on? Yeah, your an own? independent independent group altogether. Cool. cool. Um, you know, like experiments aren't very credible until they're done by different people different places right yeah yeah so of you course. might as well get it going in parallel you know <laughs> yeah but, yeah so yeah i'm thinking and uh i don't know it was short term shouldn't be too long we're getting close and the other the other folks won't take them long they've done a lot of this sort of thing before right so uh they should they should be able to do it in you know like four or five months and we should have less than that for the for the original one that we started. Wow! At least it, at least it looks like we're close. I mean, who knows? I right, yeah. I thought it was I thought it was only going to take four or five months. <laughs> two years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, so isn't it's, that uh, how things go? Yeah, it's you know to the experiment on paper and and uh, theoretically is very simple, but to actually do it in yeah. hardware, you know, to actually perform it is another thing altogether. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're trying to measure, you know, single photons, of course, going to speed of light over about six foot of laboratory space. And it takes some pretty precise alignments and precise equipment and yeah. a lot of noise management. It's just a whole lot of things that uh, are difficult when you're dealing with things that fast, that small, in a you know in a relatively small space yeah. it just makes it really hard to do and if you're down at a photon level well that's really you know it's, it's really hard to get rid of the noise yeah i can't imagine uh, how complicated and using yeah. all the various instruments and getting access to a yeah. lab to use them and all of that it, it makes sense that it's taken a while yeah and of course n- none of us on the on the first team had ever done it before so it it was one of these things well let's get this equipment and then it turns out well that really wasn't the best choice you know, we're gonna have yeah. to get something else because you know this one was in the right wavelength range but it varies from you know week to week it changes some it's not stable enough and of course you don't know that until you try it experiment with it and find out things aren't working right and why right. aren't they working right and you yeah it's just a long Tweeting difficult and, path to yeah. yeah to get that done but i think we're getting pretty close now that's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, thanks for uh, making the time to have a chat with me today. Yeah, I appreciate you're, it. You're welcome. I've uh, I've been. It's interesting my uh, my journey with listening to your stuff and also just you know various other things to do with uh, the whole kind of gamut of you know I guess what's going on in life and reality and uh, the meaning of life and mm-hmm. all these all of these kinds of big ultimate questions. And uh, <clears throat> it's it's confounding stuff, of course, you know, of, especially for people who don't have like direct experience with well, direct experience with stuff that says to them, oh, this is what's you know going on for sure, and mm-hmm. um, you know stuff like that. But something that I mean, I, I've I've been reading a lot actually about uh, some some Eastern philosophy, Bhakti and some traditions uh kind of within that realm of things uh which have a lot of really uh interesting similarities to mbt almost practically identical with like a few exceptions Mm -hmm. that i find kind of interesting um i have a few things that i'd like to talk about but we may as well just start there because that popped into my head first um are you familiar with bhakti and and that? No, I'm not real familiar with that. I do know that uh, well, the Buddha and I pretty much see eye to eye in the sense that we, yeah. you know, we both come to the same conclusions that <clears throat> this, what we call the physical reality, he said was illusion. I say it's a virtual reality, but that's yeah. just about the same thing, given the metaphors that were available at the time. 
Right. Yeah. That, so, that's, that's so Bhakti is very similar, but the one key difference that they have compared to Buddhism, I mean, it falls out of the Bhagavad Gita basically. Um, mm-hmm. And it's essentially just devotional service, but the key difference is um, impersonal, basically an impersonal God, as opposed to a personal God. Uh, mm-hmm. And the, the thing that's interesting about that is that uh, if you spoke to someone who is a practitioner of bhakti or a swami or someone, mm-hmm. they would say that uh, that the idea of an impersonal kind of all encompassing, for lack of a better metaphor, energy or whatever you want to call it, some some big, uh, big energy source, that that is uh, still kind of short of what is ultimately like the goal of any individual being which is to like relate personally to to a god or to in in that case would be krishna um -hmm. and uh what's interesting about that to me is the idea of the personality of uh some type of personality that exists in that thing that's outside of us Mm -hmm. that's bigger than us that that we come from um And so that kind of led me to thinking about the LCS. Obviously, these are all metaphors. That's something else I wanted to actually talk to you Mm -hmm. about. But um, these are all metaphors, of course, to some degree, I suppose. But it it got me thinking about the LCS and and what real kind of personality the LCS might have in terms of its existence Mm -hmm. as a consciousness. Um, because I have to assume that it's more like us than less like us as individuals in some sense. Um, okay. What are your thoughts on on that? Yeah, well, that, that's uh, yeah, that's a good question. And my yeah, my my theory would have the LCS is kind of all of the above, in that it's it's not uh, supernatural; it's just a natural system. It's consciousness. Uh, it's, it is conscious, you know, it's a consciousness system. As a consciousness system, it's about information. So it's an information system. Yep. And it's not perfect. Uh, it's still evolving. It's not done yet. So it's just a natural system. Uh, so that would kind of fit the, you know, you call Bhakti, but I, I am familiar with the Krishna group, but I didn't know that name Bhakti. Right. So yeah. I, yeah. So anyway, uh, so in that sense, it is just a natural system. Right. And yes, indeed, uh, we are much like it because we are a piece of it. We're just a piece of that. Uh, if you know computer ter- terminology, it's uh, we would be the virtual machine inside the you know the larger sure, machine. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So it's that. So we all we have the same basic properties that the larger system has, but we have it at just a very smaller capacity and so does the so is there because when we i think this is this gets me thinking about the the metaphors that you use which i think are are really really beneficial in terms of being able to conceptualize in a fresh new way Mm. what is which is obviously your goal and i think you're very successful at it being able to conceptualize what all all of these kind of moving parts are even though there there are no moving parts (laughs) but um these different ideas these different concepts that we have to kind of think about as separate things even though they're not separate um i i find and i think i think a lot of other people who listen to your to your work probably feel the same way and and i know that some people do because i've heard it and i've heard other various q a's where people have you know talked about the metaphors of the computer and the the hard drive and this and that Mm -hmm. and it's a it's an interesting conundrum because it makes the most sense to us because we know what these computers are and it's a very definable metaphor Mm -hmm. so we can look and say oh yeah i know what a server is and i know what the server how the server sends information over the internet and all this stuff but at the same time it's very very cold uh i think to a lot of people who are like um you know more artist types or uh more emotional about the the way they're thinking about the system that they're a part of right and uh so that's that's something that i've uh, had trouble thinking about because we get caught up in any metaphor we get caught up 
in any metaphor that we're talking about. Um, but I just think it's interesting that the computer metaphor is at once very easy to understand for some people, maybe it's not for others, but, but at the same time, it kind of produces this other offshoot, which is this kind of uh, cold picture. Of, oh, we're all just data on a hard yeah. drive. Like that's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's and yeah. I think at one point you actually used a metaphor about a refrigerator, which I thought was like kind of <laughs> hilarious that uh, thinking about ourselves as like free on running through a refrigerator <laughs> yeah. over and over mm -hmm. again. Yeah, but the yeah. personality that's that's what I was yeah. wanting to, well, to talk about, really. Yeah, the larger conscious system is conscious, it, you know, it's aware, as are we. So it may be a natural system, but that doesn't mean that it isn't also personal. So that's what I meant when I said MBT really does all of the above. It is also personal. And it's personal in the sense that it's, it is being driven by just one criteria and that is lowering entropy. Okay, so it lowers its entropy. That means creates information, more value. Yeah, more novel, more novelty. Yeah. Yeah, but no novelty that does something, novelty that, not just novelty for novelty's sake, but uh, novelty that accomplishes something. So that's its drive, and we are one of its major strategies for doing that. Because if it's just one monolithic thing, it's very limited. Once you have multiple things with free will, then the possibilities go up. The, the amount of novelty that's possible goes up dramatically. So the fact that we are here also driven to lower our entropy, which of course you're familiar enough with my yeah. stuff to know that means becoming love, caring, yeah. you know, compassion, all that sort of thing. Um, that's our mission. And as we do that, it does that too, because we're part of it. So if we lower our entropy, its entropy is lowered because we are a piece of it. Now it is motivated to help us succeed. So we talk about, you know, the personal God. Well, I don't call the larger conscious system a God because God it's got many, baggage. Yeah, many yeah. people's yeah. minds is something, you know, mystical and supernatural and perfect and infinite and all that sort of stuff, which this is not. Although it does have most of the attributes that people would, you know, give God or a God. It has most of those attributes because it is motivated to help us succeed. Then it is important to have a good personal relationship, a good working relationship with the LCS, because if you do, you'll get some help. You'll get some some nudges. You'll get some synchronicity that, you know, just kind of bumps the right information in front of you about the time you need it. These kinds of things will will take place yeah just, right and just, it's just to help just to help you out now if you have a a bad relationship with a larger conscious system or even a neutral one it doesn't bother to be of much help to you because it can't you don't accept it you'd reject it you wouldn't you know you wouldn't pay attention to the lessons that it offers so in that way the mbt uh, larger consciousness system is um a thing of itself, you know, it's, it's, um, what, what did, I can't remember the words you used, but it is a, uh, a non supernatural system that is still in the process of evolving. Yeah, right. Yeah. And also, though, it's something in which you can have a personal relationship. And that personal relationship does matter, as far as your ability to function and learn and grow. Right. So that's the, you know, it kind of hits all of those, all of those high points. Now, the thing about it being cold is it's cold because it's rational. So, so are long, you talking about the LCS now itself? Yeah, no, I'm talking about people's, people's feeling yeah. that the, that they, that the um, computer metaphor, you yeah. know, is a cold metaphor. Yeah. Well, I would suggest that it seems cold because it's rational. Correct. Yeah, that's 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 all. That's the right. whole point. Right. If it wasn't rational, if it was more, if the metaphors were more flowery and more fuzzy and more hazy, then it would seem 
you know, a warmer. little warmer and, and nicer. But the fact that it is is actually rational, that MBT is a, is a logical science. Okay, we have this, and therefore we have this and this. And that's the cold things that people yeah. get because they, they want to think of this, this, the source as somehow a warm, fuzzy, mystical thing that, uh, you know, they can connect to in a, in a warm, fuzzy, mystical way. But that and, must also be true, right? I mean, there must in some there, it, like, yes, there must be rationality. Well, there must uh, be rationality. No but matter, I, yeah, no matter where your your model is, if it's not a rational model, then it's not a useful model. But it also must there also has to be some I mean, the LCS must be compassionate and all of these other sure. various things. Otherwise, uh, sure. I mean, it's there's a reflection of that here as well, right? I mean, yes. art and poetry and, and uh, sure. that's a part of it. A part exactly. Of it as well. It's a very, a very loving source, not only the source, but a very loving, caring, compassionate, uh, cooperative uh, source that uh, you can have a personal relationship with. So, And, and what did it, yeah, in, a, in the sense that, uh, I mean, obviously, it's going to think about things in a very different way than we're thinking about them. Uh, inconceivable, probably, I'm sure, to any human being on, uh, here now in this and how we're discussing right now. But um, it because it evolved from a certain point at, at, at some point, it must have like was was the LCS evolving in its own uh, virtual realities or like does it know what it's like to be here and go through what we're going through oh does sure it, it does sure. well it's has got it to, gone it, through this kind of stuff how did it evolve no. to the point just before okay. it created these um realities and these because it's a pretty magnificent thing to conceptualize to think about creating what we walk around here and see every day it's absolutely magnificent um and uh, so, yeah, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, like how, sure. How did it, I'd, yeah. be, I'd be glad to. Well, you know, my, in my model, I start with consciousness at its most uh, primitive and, and simple, uh, uh, what should I say, yeah, manifestation. In other words, it's just, I define and awareness, consciousness. awareness, right? Like yeah, just I, a, I define, awareness. yeah, I define consciousness as awareness with a choice. Okay, that's my definition of consciousness. This or that. Yeah, and if you have any choice at all, it has to be free will choice, otherwise it's not a choice. So yeah, just this and that, that was all. So I start with just an awareness that it could be in this state or that state. And from that, then I let it naturally evolve towards states of lower entropy from that forward. Yeah, okay, it creates so more, and more and more complicated yeah, patterns. Yeah, that's the way the model goes. Now, the larger conscious system had to learn that love was the answer it had to learn that you don't uh you know you don't maximize uh, entropy reduction by force that that doesn't work and you know there's all sorts of of um literature and stories that's very very old the stuff that's come to us i guess a lot through religious uh organizations both you know indigenous peoples and their and their stories that have passed down and even in the Christian and the Muslim and the and anyway, basically, we have a an angry, jealous God, particularly Old Testament, at least in Christianity, that would be the Old Testament God, right? Uh, listen, listen, people do what I say, or, you know, there'll yeah. be, you know, the, there will be problems, you know, I'll turn you into pillars of salt, or I'll do something else, you know. Yeah. So, that was, I think, those stories represent a time when the LCS was learning about how to optimize a social system. Okay, it was a it it was the monolithic system. Got about as far as it could go with that. Developed individuated units of consciousness with free will, and I think it immediately said, "All right, all you individual." individuated units of free will, here's what we're going to do today, you know, we're all going to practice patience and being nice and cooperating with each other. But these things had free will. And they said, No, we're doing whatever we want to do, because we have free will. And then the system tried to get coercive. Now, listen, 
You know, you need to do what I say. And I think that if you look at Old Testament, it's a totally different aspect of God in the Christian sense as it is in the New Testament. In the New Testament, it's all about love and caring and turning the other cheek and, you know, compassion and that sort of thing. In the Old Testament, it's this vengeful, uh, a powerful God that, uh, you know, uh, smites your enemy. Um, right, right. So you're saying that you're, you're talking neighbors. about this from the LCS's perspective. Yeah, from the LCS's perspective, it wasn't just born a, a, a thing of love. It had to learn that just like we do. And basically, it learned it once it created us, the IUOCs. So once it had all these IUOCs, it went through the phase where it was in charge, and then it went through the set. That didn't work. It was the bully, and then it was demanding. And eventually, it learned that every time you try to use control, power, force to optimize you know, low entropy, you end up raising entropy. It just doesn't work. Forcing people to grow up doesn't work. They just push back. So at that point, it realized that that's not functional. Right. And it, it would it would evolve better and could only evolve if it became a, a you know a force of love. Let people evolve however they did and just try to be helpful in the background, you know, without uh, violating their free will because they have to make the change themselves. So that's right. Because you know, it has to be genuine. I mean, that makes sense. Right. It's a, exactly. That's something that you see in a lot of, you know, movies yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. It's a very, right. that's a common, if you don't make the change yourself, you're really not making a change exactly. at all. Exactly. So the LCS had to learn just like we did. So and is we that were, running we were in its real teacher. Time? Yeah. Is that running in real time in the sense that uh, from the beginning of our you know, world at this point, however many billions of years, uh, is that well, running in real time in terms of the LCS's learning or? Well, yes, let me get the, we'll get the uh, timing straight here. First you had the LCS, it evolves to be the monolithic thing. Then it yeah. creates, you know, IUOCs. Then it finds that the IUOCs are not evolving very well because it's just the big chat room. So there's, there's really no meaningful choices there. So it's still all potential and none of the potential is really being actualized because there's nothing to force the actualization, no context in which so the there's actualization no VRs at that point. can take none. place. So at that point, there is the only VR is, is communication protocols. Right. A VR is defined by rules. Yeah. If you have a, a, a setup and you can interact within that setup according to the rules, that's a VR. Yep. Okay, so communication protocols was the VR that we were all in then communicating. So then it decides to create a virtual reality with a tighter rule set so that it would it would be uh, a better learning environment. It does that not by not by uh, programming it, but by taking initial conditions and a rule set and trial and error, you know, working out the right initial conditions and the right rule set over probably many thousands and thousands of, of trial and errors tries. And are those until, just calculations that it's running in its own virtual it's calculation? It's, it, it's calculations that it's running. Now it is consciousness. It is an information system. So it can evolve and configure a part of itself just as a computer. That's yeah, just right, a piece yeah. of itself. So yeah. there's a subset and that's a, that's, that's a computer. And there's another subset and that's a lot of them. And that's IUOCs. So it can take pieces of itself and do that again, like a virtual machine in a in a bigger machine. You know, it's just yeah. it, it can do that sort of thing. So it it evolved this virtual reality for us to interact in. All right, and so now we're out of the big chat room and we're in this virtual reality, and suddenly there are, there are tons of very meaningful choices. Life and death choices pop up every day. It's a very difficult environment to be in. So are we the and, first iteration of that? Is it, are we in that? Is, are we still running in the first iteration of yes. the, we yeah, are? So, yeah, so what's this? So, so we're, yeah, so, so we are evolving. Homo sapiens just climbed out of the trees about 200,000 years ago. 
not all that long. Not that long you at know? all, really. No, it's yeah. just 200,000 years ago that Homo sapiens were, were around. Before that, of course, there were, you know, the chimpanzees, which we, what do we have, like 98 or something percent of the same DNA. You know, right. Obviously, there's a very close relative there as far as our physical system goes and the way we work. But in any case, so about 200,000 years ago was Homo sapien. And at that point, the system had finally gotten to an avatar that was really good for making choices, moral choices, ethical choices, important choices that you could learn from. And so that was, that was, I guess, the first really big success as far as generating avatars, because animals were generated as avatars, but they didn't have the, the capacity or the decision space that was that challenging. And that's where kind of the, the computer metaphor gets a little bit, it starts to break down a little bit because the, the well, like when I think about iterating software or something, right? Like you could, it, it, it's hard to, to understand that obviously the physical constraints set on the rule set in order to create the VR that needed to be created, mm -hmm. ruled out any possibility of starting anywhere other than the very beginning of the physical, right. the quote unquote physical world. Because logically you think, well, why not just start, bang, you just start yeah. the program right at human beings. Then you'd have to program all what a human being was and what, what, That's right. what they yeah. could do. The it whole thing would be, be programmed and it would not be as natural it wouldn't uh, have the uh, the the causality that it needs right you know, the history yeah. it just wouldn't be wouldn't be as good a you need to start from the beginning but then it it didn't have to always use the same the same clock so in the beginning when it was mainly just stuff interacting right plasma cooling suns forming planets forming and all of that it could use much, much bigger delta T's, so it could pass, go through time much faster. The, phys the physics people call that inflation. So in the beginning, right. in the beginning, things seem to happen very quickly. So we evolved quickly, and it did that until it got the simulation to the point where there were critters that made choices, and it no doubt, uh, you know, well, in the beginning, it played all the parts. The system itself, all the parts were NPCs. You know, it played all of them. But then as it had pieces of consciousness that would fit with an avatar, then it would, it would uh, you know, kind of match those up, or at least ask if those didn't want to join this, uh, you know, this virtual reality as an as a entropy reduction trainer. So a lot, of the, a lot of things, it probably continues to play as as npcs you know it's there's just not that productive as learning you know as, as learning platforms as say homo sapiens is or even dogs and cats and dolphins and whales and and that they all have their own environment and their own learning and mostly they're doing the same thing we're doing they're making choices and they evolve by the quality of those yeah. of those choices so that's the way it started and then as the homo sapien came along you know, then the IUOCs were encouraged to go log in yeah. and get connected. And as they did, this was the first time the system really could see what was happening when these IUOCs had real choices besides just chatting in the chat room. And I'm sure it was dismayed at the choices that they made. You know, it, it yeah, uh, pretty brutal. Because they had, <laughs> because they hadn't developed that potential, there yeah. was there was still this big open potential for for being positive and a big open potential for being negative, except the negative is easier. The negative, yeah, that, see, that's something. The negative that's... is always is always easier. And look at it this way: look at it statistically. If you have a uh, some major decision you want to make, okay. If you look at all the possibilities of making the right choice, you will find that there's maybe one or two or th even three paths that lead to a good, a good choice. But there's literally hundreds of thousands of bad choices right. that lead to you know, a bad ending. Yeah. So if you just look at, the, at that, 
you can see that that uh, it's so much easier to make a poor choice. There's yeah. lots of lots of ways you can do something poorly, and they don't take a whole lot of thinking. They don't take much effort. You don't have to be very grown up. It's just right in front of you. You're hungry. Somebody else has food. You just take it away from them if yeah. you're bigger than they are. You know, that's just well, simple. and that's I mean, it's survival right yeah. here in the thing. It's it's uh, here in the VR. It's so much different, obviously, than conceptualizing it outside of outside of it, which is why exactly. I asked, like, I can only imagine that. I mean, I suppose there are examples of the LCS coming coming here and making good choices itself. I can't imagine that it's not going to want to come in and play a character or two or three. <laughs> like, well, it, it would maybe as NPCs, particularly in the beginning. It, but it an could... NPC is still the LCS, right? Because it's yeah. making those decisions. So it's right. the non it's a non player character, but it's really not because it's the LCS doing. So that we're still gaining. The system is still gaining from that, from those choices, right? Well, yeah, I, I guess you could say the system's gaining from those choices um, for a while anyway, until the system grows up. Right. So it's, it's, you know, so we start playing and we don't do very well because it's easier to make poor choices than it is to make really good choices. And you need to be grown up to make those good choices. And you have to start at the bottom. So then the LCS saw that a lot of those IUC, IUOCs were just consistently and continually making poor choices. And it was like, no, that's not what I had in mind. You know, we were all supposed to evolve with this thing. So then I think is where you get your Old Testament stuff. It right, decided yeah. it was going to try to fix that. And it, uh, it grew up and realize that you can't fix it with force. You can only fix it by, by giving, you, you can only give others an environment in which they can make better choices. You can't make those choices for them, or like you say, it's not real. You know, you, yeah. they have to make it out of the core, not because they're acting or because you told them to do that. They need to do it on their own. Otherwise it doesn't count toward, you know, they're, they're growing up. So then the system, yeah learned that love was the answer and then it became a system of love so the larger consciousness system is a very loving system a very caring system it's conscious it's aware and if you are making an effort to lower your entropy it will work with you and that's that's uh see that's a lot of the things that the the uh bhakti you know, group has gotten right. I mean, even technically to do with the system, like the fact that it's basically compound, you know, you don't lose its cumulative, uh, cumulative mm -hmm. growth rather. So, you know, you make 5.5% growth this time you, you come back and you start at that level of growth right. mm -hmm. um, and those various things. But that kind of brings up another question as far as um, fear goes and that kind of stuff, because a lot of the fear and I understand my understanding of this in, in, as far as your model goes is that there's a certain we have a certain level of love and a certain level of fear at our at our being level, which is which is our IUOC, I guess, right? Our actual mm -hmm. full individuated unit of consciousness as opposed to the free will awareness unit, which is partitioned from our partition. It's a smaller partition, right. our partition. Right. Uh, but what I observe anyway in the world is that a lot of fear is born seems to be anyway born from the physical world from the VR a lot of physical a lot of fear and pain uh, is born from this experiences we have here uh, and and then and if it's not if it's coming from our being level from outside of here it, it's really hard to understand uh, where is this fear really coming from in its originality you know like is it is this another is it a force that that uh, is being worked against that's in ex that exists outside of the no. VR or no, no. why do it's... we have at the being level why are we if we were partitioned off from the lcs and it mm -hmm. had a vision of Oh, I want to, you know, become more, do, become more love for whatever reason to, to grow its, grow itself. Why, why, why would we have yeah. any fear to begin with? Well, 
because the larger cancer system hadn't grown up that much when it created the IUOCs. It was the IUOCs that taught it that love was the answer. So it wasn't all that loving when it created the IUOCs. It just created those because it knew that that would create more novelty, more possibilities for it to evolve into, and it would be positive for its evolution. So it was then, fearful as what well. it was. It had a lot of fear. Well, well, it just had potential. So you just start out and you just have potential and you make choices. It wasn't real fearful in the sense that it, it also didn't have a lot of ethical choices, a lot of, of uh, what do we say, choices with consequences. I mean, it had consequences, some, but they were kind of long term and more, more like a, a scientist doing science has consequences. You know, it had those kind of consequences, but the day to day choices were pretty benign for both the system and the IUOCs. It's just a big chat room. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now it makes all these IUOCs. And now things get out of hand because it says, all right, everybody, let's do this. And the IUOC say, no, thank you. We're doing something else. And so we're actually at risk of producing more. It's a risky decision then to do that because sure that we could uh, evolve. We could also just degrade endlessly into a complete disaster heap of fear and loathing. Yeah, that's a possibility. But you know, like most uh, places where they let, um, virtual realities evolve on their own. And there's there's multiple, you know, computer science centers around the globe that, that do that. They make up rule sets and initial conditions and they let them evolve. And they often tweak them. If they if it if it gets real close to something they want, but it's not quite right, they'll go in and make an adjustment, you know, and not always an adjustment at the rule set and initial conditions level. They may make some kind of little rule that they stick in there to prevent problems. So this, it's probably so that the system has meddled a little bit with the system to make it turn out the way it wants, because I know, you know, when you work with software, you do that. It's just, you know, you, you tend to, to fiddle with it and twiddle with it until you get it the way you, you want it. So, Yes, it started this this idea that we will make a, a, a virtual reality that will create consequential choices. But at that point, it wasn't that grown up itself. It wasn't really fearful, but it wasn't really loving. It really wasn't anything. It was just consciousness. It had lots of potential, but nothing had driven it to one way or the other. So it was just sort of you know, neutral. And then these IUOCs were like that too. They were kind of neutral. And then he makes this environment where there are really uh, life-changing, life-threatening choices to be made. And they found out that, or the system found out that they tended to make the bad choices first because that's natural because there's thousands of bad choices for every good choice. And you can't make good choices until you've grown up some, until you've developed some of that potential. So, you know, the fear just comes from the fact that we have free will. That's the basic, you know, that's the basic thing that lets us develop the fear is that we have potential to make good or bad choices because we have free will. And when we make bad choices, that's toward higher entropy, that's toward fear. You know, we, we abuse other people, we create fear. So that's where the fear comes from. But you have to go there. It's like, this is a process you're going to have to go through if you're ever going to get to the place where all of these IUOCs make something really beautiful. You know, really do lower their entropy. You can't just start at the top. Right. So once yeah. he so once he had this this going, then he himself, the he, you know, the larger conscious system itself um, started to evolve more in the direction of caring and love and, and so on. And, and why why right, it's love because because of uh basically it's more productive in the sense that yeah. I mean, that's that's the that's the metaphor of entropy and in in that right. more, more random equals basically less structure and less right. structure is obviously bad because you're not going to have anything around it, right it can't do much yeah yeah so you want to do more so you want to build more structure and the best way to do that is by making loving caring decisions basically right, right. in a social system right because Once otherwise you... why not just go with fear and 
<laughs> I mean, mm. that that would be an obvious decision, but it's yeah. not going to be. It's ultimately not going to be productive. It, it's dysfunctional. It's yeah. destructive. It it raises entropy. What you end up with is just chaos. So it it doesn't uh, it doesn't build. It doesn't grow someplace. It doesn't evolve. It just it just de evolves into something less and then something less than that and it just kind of goes that way but there's so, other vrs too right i mean sorry to cut you off but yeah. there's other uh i'm gonna try and get through as many of my ideas as possible before we're sure, done sure. um it, naturally you just think well why not just make slow and i've i've heard you talk about this before but why not make slower progress in a way that's more positive and let because i i mean it, and I know you've said things are getting better, and I can see why you mm -hmm. would say that ultimately, because if you think about the beginning of humanity to compare to where we are now, there has been marginal improvement. But uh, it, why not make smaller improvements over longer periods of time with less like carnage, basically less destruction here? <laughs> because don't don't isn't there a worry about producing uh, like a snowball effect of um, we're going to actually start creating more. Uh, we're going to create more entropy, basically, because of the system itself. No. Yeah, no, there's that's, you know, you can't start. You can't start in the middle and you can't start at the end. You have to start at the beginning and you have to let the system evolve on its own and it will evolve eventually toward lower entropy states and you know that it's not just going to go and and hit the bottom now it may de-evolve for a while before it turns around but there's a you know a carrot and a stick going on here as well and the general you know i guess the carrot and the stick is is uh, sort of the force that tells you that eventually it's going to turn around and and go toward the carrot you know the stick keeps whapping it the carrot keeps holding out something better so the thing is that if you cooperate and care, life gets so much better. If you live a kind of a low entropy life, make good choices, then you're happier. Life is better. Your relationships are better. Everything works better. And if you make self-centered choices and high entropy choices, you just create pain for yourself. So you've got this situation and if all of these people just keep hurting each other, well, they're just going to stay miserable. And as they realize that, you know, being cooperative makes everything better and gets, you know, helps uh, alleviate that misery. Well, it may take them a while to figure that out, but you know, that's the way the game's set up. So there is this, this bias toward e evolution, toward evolving, toward, you know, right. you got the, you got the stick that every time you make a poor choice, you get slapped by it. And when you make a good choice, things work out much better. But people want to know if they can go and relax for a while, because this is a brutal place to be for a lot of people. It's it's and it maybe it's necessary. You know, it's it's and that's fine. It's it, if it's necessary, it is what it is. And eventually people will make more positive choices. But like people want to know that. Uh, that it's okay for them to have the idea that, you know what, I want to take a rest for a while, <laughs> a couple dozen, a couple, yeah. hundred thousand years of, uh, you know, being in the done reality or something like that, you know, yeah. going somewhere else and, and being with a lot of people who are going to be, isn't that going to be productive? Won't that inspire your, uh, your consciousness to want to come back to some other place and do yeah. a better job? Yeah. Well, you could, you could take a rest, but there's really not much value in that. The only reason that it feels negative and feels harsh and feels difficult is because of the fear and the ego and the beliefs that we have. If you don't have those, that fear, then you look at the world today and you see all kinds of dysfunction going on there, all kinds of, you know, ugliness, you know, greed and nastiness and grabbiness and all of that's there. And sure, that's there in a very large, you know, it's mostly that, you know, but mostly, you don't, yeah. you don't look at it. You don't look at it and say, Oh, this is awful. I really hate being here. That's because you have fear and ego. Well, you look at it and you say, wow, all these people, they're doing the best they can with what they got. They just need to evolve. And, and until they, yeah. and until they evolve, 
they're just going to make poor choices. So you do what you can to help them make better choices. You talk with them, you give them a safe space, you do what you can, but you don't look at them and say, oh, you stupid people. So that's your own fear. Yeah. Yeah, you, just yeah. say, eh, you have you have compassion. You have compassion for these people. So you don't look at it and think that all these awful people, you look at it and, and see that there's a lot of people who aren't very grown, who are struggling, making poor choices, but that that's what you have to do. You can't, you can't get there by skipping steps. You know, it's just like, you know, look and at you're, the, you've, you're willing to, ex you, you've accepted that obviously you've, yeah, you've the, you have a vision of a bigger picture that allows you to say like, okay, that's, that's the way it is. We'll do better eventually. Yeah. And, and that's can, what we've been doing. Yeah. A for lot of last... people can't see that. A lot of people can't see that though. And it causes them a lot of distress. Right. And, and just the answer, just when people hear, I think this is just my intuitive kind of sense mm -hmm. of like what people kind of feel here in, in the here and now is that some people, you know, I guess it's incremental, right? So that's fine. It's, you know, you'll hear one good thing and you'll go, oh yeah, great. I can do it. And then next week something bad happens and you're like, damn the whole thing. I don't even care. That last thing that I heard last week is, is now completely erased from, uh, from my, I'm no longer inspired to do a bit. Uh -huh. People go through this up and down in their life. Sure. Right. That's the struggle. They're, yeah. they're struggling to do the best they can with what they came in with, with what they've got. And yes, as they make better choices, their life will get better. And does there just their intent? Is it just the intent to do better? Even let's say somebody is going through their life and it's just shit and they're having a real difficult time and it's at every corner, they feel like they're having some uh, bad luck or something. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but they say they want to do better and they're, they're really trying to do their best. Actually, they're trying to do their best. Uh, is it, does that count for anything? The, the, sure, sure. that they no. want to do better, that they want uh, to try the best. Yeah, that accounts for everything. It's it's your intent is, is the key thing. It's not your actions, it's your intent. But if you, if you have the bigger picture, then you wouldn't particularly feel bad that your life was very difficult because a difficult life just means a challenge. You know, there's, there's lessons. And you would learn the things that you need to learn. And maybe you were a very poor person in a very destitute area, but you would uh, you know, do what you could. You'd live, you'd be kind to other people, and you would evolve. Evolution is not about being happy and you know drinking a lot of beer and going to parties. Evolution is about growing growing up. It's not about having fun. Yeah. So right. sometimes see that's but that is sometimes like, it's hard. Yeah, but, right. Of course. As you as you grow up then more times it's fun and joyful and easy. Right. In the beginning, it tends to be harder because you create that difficulty yourself. When you say, oh man, everything's gone wrong. You know, I tried this and that, that smashed me and I did it and it's awful and I hate this. Well, all that is is self-pity. Oh, woe is me. Yeah. Well, that's ego, that's fear, you know, and once you outgrow that, even when things get hard, it's okay. And you know, I, I know people that had some very good friends who were, I don't know, by the socioeconomic, they were at the very bottom of the pile. You know, they lived in a tiny little house, maybe had 500 square feet, them and you know, three kids, and and uh, it, uh, they were in poverty, but they were terrific people. They were well grown up. They basically were happy, you know, their family was successful. Uh, you know, the guy worked as an automobile mechanic and uh, they didn't make a lot of money. They, they were beautiful people though. They were very caring, you know, and very giving and, and uh, they didn't have a whole lot to give in material things, but they had a whole lot to give in just being friendly and positive. So you don't have to have a, you know, a, a fat bank account to, to grow up, you can grow up in any situation. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. You know, so even take some situation where you see, you know, you s used to see these pictures more than you do today, but there would be some, uh, some place like Biafra where there was famine and people were starving yeah. and you would see pictures of some, some lady and she's got a little bit of food from the, from the white cross or whoever was, 
with handing out things and she's got two or three kids and they have these big blown up bellies from you know from malnutrition but you see that their kids are they're playing with each other they're running around you know they're they're all a family she divides up her her food you know for the children and there's love in that family there's connection there's opportunity to to give and to care and to have fun so now you, we look at them and say wow poor people that's yeah. terrible that's yeah. So they're in the they're in the bottom of the pit yeah but they may be growing where some guy with a billion dollars who just wants more and more and more and doesn't mind running over people to get it well that person's de-evolving so you can evolve in any situation you don't yeah. have to have a lot of means it's just people with a with a lot of fear and ego and beliefs then they have bad attitudes they're angry that they're that they're poor. They're angry that other people have more than they have. They're angry that all these dumb people who keep messing up their life and all that anger just makes them miserable. And so what's but, your advice to, to people who are kind of in that second? Because there's a lot of people who are in that second yeah. category, like a lot of people, like I think probably the majority of people at this yeah. point are in that second category. And the the I have heard you talk about some practical advice in terms of how to get rid of fears um, and how to deal with some of these things. And I think we need more of that stuff because that's the real juice that actually matters. Right. Yeah. And none of this yeah. other stuff actually matters. Obviously, knowing any of this can be helpful in terms of conceptualizing a larger picture. But I also know that you know, at an intuitive level, it doesn't really matter knowing any of the, the interesting, the interesting stuff, like, uh, you know, what's going on and, you know, going to another uh, VR and all of that kind of stuff could be helpful, maybe, but the real thing is obviously, you know, becoming a better person, so to speak. So what, I mean, do you have anything that you, that you well, say to yes, people a couple in of your things. life? Yeah, a couple of things. And that is, people should try very hard to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And that should be a goal of them. Now, most people are in some ways part of the problem and in other ways part of the solution. You know, everybody's not just either pure love or, you know, evil. There's a, there's a mixture. Most people have, have uh, you know, some love going on in their attitudes and their feelings. And they also have some nasty stuff going some anger and some self pity and the rest of that going on too. So most people are a mixture. Well, in as much as you're positive, in as much as as uh, you your feelings, let's just talk about feelings are positive. Okay, now positive feelings are feelings of happiness and joy and satisfaction and that sort of thing. Uh, negative feelings are things like anger, stress even uh, uh uh what is it uh, yeah. stress stress that's is, a, stress, is stress is negative we create that stress if we yeah. didn't have the fear and ego that stress would disappear so even the stress you have is a negative but people who are feeling like they're not they're not um being appreciated they're not getting what they're due that they are being um you know that there's others that are keeping them down that sort of thing you know so they they blame things on other people everything would be fine if it just weren't for these people that messing everything up well that's all part of the problem that's not part of the solution that's part a of the lot problem of those people i think also feel defeated by their own psychology they feel defeated by their own yes their own outlook on things and it's an internal battle actually sure maybe That's there's true. some stuff with other people who are holding them down but i think there's a lot of people who actually just feel defeated by themselves they want to be a better person but they maybe they are successful sometimes but uh you know they feel defeated by themselves a lot of a lot of the time mm -hmm. i think yes that's one of the thing that is uh endemic in our culture is that people feel insecure people feel inadequate people feel like they're not all that they should be and all of that's negative you know all that's negative feelings so basically if you try to be part of the solution which means try always to be positive so if somebody says oh you really messed that up didn't you 
instead of being defensive and getting angry, you try to deal with that positively. Well, uh, well why do you think so? You know, where do you, where do you see the problem? You know, and try to try to learn and deal with things in a positive way. So if you make an effort to do that, that's one thing. And of course, you won't all the time, you know, you'll get angry and you'll get upset and, and so on. But just realize that every time your feeling is a negative feeling, you're part of the problem. You see the 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 nasty uh, uh, what uh, CEOs and the businesses that are trying to rip us off, the nasty politicians, the the nasty uh, people that are in our in our culture in general. You know whether they're in politics or law enforcement or whatever. You know there's there's people who are who are problems right there. Well. If you get rid of that, if you take that 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 uh, nasty dictator and get rid of him and replace him with some nice person, all right, you've just fixed a symptom. You haven't fixed the problem. That nasty dictator is just a symptom of the low quality yeah. of consciousness. You see, so changing, you know, making that corporation, you know give away some of its money. Well, okay, it's, it's civilizing for us. It's kinder to deal with people who are made to play nice, but it's just fixing the, you know, it's not fixing the problem. And it won't last. That dictator who was a nice guy, well, he may last for a while, but somebody's going to shoot him and take over because they want power. You know, it just won't last. As long yeah. as you have dysfunctional people, you're going to have this mess that we live in. Well, it's because like, of it's because of us. That's why it's like yeah. that. It's a reflection it's, of us. It's a so reflection. Once you see that the biggest thing you can do to save the world is to save yourself, is to grow up. That's your biggest contribution you can make to the world. And if we all did that, then the those evil dictators wouldn't be there. They just go away. And those those uh, you know CEOs that are just trying to get richer and richer would think more about being kinder and and what could they give back you know i've got plenty now how can i give some back so we have to change ourselves and until we do our world is going to be the mess that we find it in so it's us so instead of blaming them we have to say it's us and we can't change anybody else you can't force change all you can do is give people an environment where they can change themselves. That's going to be a slow process. So you need a, you know, your vision needs to be long term. It's not like, oh, we're going to fix all this next, next, next administration that comes in, you know, the next dictator is going to fix all this stuff. It won't happen until the well, we get so attached to our, we're so, so attached to the physical things that we have going on here, uh, that it makes that difficult, obviously. But well, another question actually that I had was these things, right, that we're doing here, these situations, these uh, conundrums and the problems that we have to solve and mm -hmm. our anger and all of that stuff. How, it's a bit of a mystery how that relates to the actual like evolution of the system, because, of course, there is nothing. There is no space. There is no uh stuff i mean it's just consciousness it's just, it's just right? consciousness well that's de-evolving but how right? do those so it's just our decisions our choices how mm -hmm. how how are these it's it's i think it's difficult for a lot of people to conceptual because it's not a computer it's really not any of that stuff those are just mechanisms that help us think about what's going right. on Right. But I think a lot of people mistakenly actually say, oh, yeah, it's a VR. It's like, no, it's mm -hmm. not. <laughs> it's that's just it, a way to think about. The it's system. like a right. It's like a VR. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a very it's good like metaphor because yeah. it helps us figure out how v, how it's working. But it's it's not a VR in the sense of how we think about it, obviously. Right. Like it's because there's no headset there's no there's none of that it's uh, it's not it's not it's nothing like that but but my my question is how does the how do these mundane choices here in this virtual reality uh, how are they helping the system evolve i think that's that's something that i haven't been okay. able to even have an idea mm -hmm. about consciousness evolves by lowering entropy every choice you make will 
either lower entropy a little, raise it a little, or not change it at all. So is it that the, the choices we make here are directly correlated to our consciousness? Yes. In, in a real sense, in a sense yes, that... absolutely. Well, Every choice we make, if we make a choice and it's a love-based choice, then not only will our life be better, but our entropy goes down. The whole system's entropy goes down. It's good. The system is evolving. It's growing. And if we make poor choices that are, that are high entropy choices, then the system de-evolves so and we de-evolve so there's us our personal consciousness our individual unit of consciousness and we by making better choices love-based choices that evolves and as it evolves of course it finds a lot more joy in life a lot more happiness it uh, it does tends to be part of the solution almost all the time rather than part of the problem almost all the time so life gets a lot better but the whole system is evolving because we evolve and the whole system de-evolves as we de-evolve. So the whole idea is you have to think about every choice you make. And is that choice positive? Is that choice something that lowers entropy or raises entropy? So pretty much we're all the programmers in the sense that the the way the system is being structured is a direct result of our choices ultimately. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's just our, our choices. That's why we're here. That's why we needed the virtual reality to give us some really meaningful choices so that we could grow. We could uh, develop that potential that we had rather than just letting that potential just sit there and not really change much. And like, why not come in with a little booklet that just gives you a little <laughs> outline of, so, so that the, so yeah. that that you're not so caught up in but that's the point i guess right As, that's that's, it. That, if you yeah. had if you had a booklet you'd start gaming the system right you wouldn't actually evolve you'd say okay we're all supposed to act kind all right, right. i'm going to act kind every time i see somebody that needs help i'll help them i'm going to act kind but there's a big difference between acting kind and being kind yeah, yeah. so you what you need to do is be kind now that's a low entropy thing acting it's, kind it's is so difficult that we need to be tricked into <laughs> <laughs> making into into being genuine basically yeah. right like we need to be put into a situation where we think the stakes are life and death when really exactly. they're they're really not life and death actually but, but we, we need to, to think they are exactly we need to think they are so that we'll make choices and eventually because of the stick and the carrot we will move forward we will evolve as a and, group and and we and we have so it's it's, it's have you system. ever gone into the uh the database of future probabilities and looked at what might happen if we're all doing a really good job yeah, I have. I've looked at I've looked at some of those. Bob Monroe in his book, he talked about some of those too. Um, you know, if we get to a point where growth can be in big steps, right now, for two hundred thousand years, we humans have been slogging along, just evolving steadily, but very, very slowly. So when you're not evolved at all, and most everybody is very low quality, you the way you organize social systems is by, you know, the warlord mentality, right? You have, you know, you have a few people in charge, and they make all the rules, and, and they own almost all the stuff. And then you have the peasants who just get to follow the rules and don't really own much of the stuff at all. You get that warlord mentality at the very bottom level and we've been struggling with that now for most of that 200,000 years kind of still looking, we are there but yeah and we still have our you know but we have a basically we now have gotten past that though in many ways you know if you look at the last 500 years you'll see that 500 years ago it was almost all that way except for a couple of little shining examples like uh you know the republic in greece or the republic in rome that really was a republic for a while before it turned back into a dictatorship so we had little bubbles of that but it doesn't last very long because we haven't we we everything happened like in small spaces in bubbles there was no communication so now we end up you know we go through the Argarian age and the iron age and all this other kind of stuff and things getting better slowly, but just in the last 500 years, 
there's a whole lot of places that have participatory government. It's not just a dictatorship. It's a, it's countries that uh, care somewhat about their citizens and their people and, and what they're doing and why they're doing it. Well, they're not in the majority yet, but they're there and they're successful and they're a good example for, you know, for the rest of us. So we are changing. And if you go 500 years ago and look how cheap life was, you know, it's a big difference now. What about like a thousand years in the future or are the, uh... I, don't, I don't think we'll have to wait that long because you see evolution wait that long for what like what i mean this is an endless game right it's going to go on for eternity. it is an endless game but but evolution goes like this i'll try to draw my finger across here from the side it goes just up very slightly very slightly but then it gets faster and goes up fast because the more you evolve the easier it is to evolve more you know it's it's really hard when you're down at the bottom right trying to trying to dig yourself out of that that, that hole that curve what's your kind of where we are now is right on the knee of that curve where it's starting to accelerate so we've had what uh uh you know a hundred and and uh well it's two hundred thousand so a hundred and Hundred and ninety thousand of that, you know, has all been just warlord mentality. Last five hundred years we've outgrown a lot of that. We're getting better. Uh, we started with the Industrial Revolution. You know, the Industrial Re Revolution had to go through some bad times. You know, what ten-year-old children being chained to their to their machines yeah. so that they wouldn't uh, not come back in the morning. You know, they would yeah. still be there. So, yeah. you know, there was a lot of abuses in that system. What do we Shanghai uh, uh, people from Asia and bring them over to work on the railroads? And there was all kinds of abuses in so the industrial age. So what happens when we get but, to but Utopia? Now, if you well, a point here is that if you didn't go through that industrial age, you'd never get to the information age. You couldn't. You see, you can't just get from agrarian to the information age with right. computers. You have to go through that. So it's 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 always like that. You have to start at the bottom. You got to go through all the crap in order to get to the point where it's better. So you can't start in the middle. So we went through all that industrial age. Now we're about at the end of the industrial age for, for some peoples. Others are just getting into it, but many now are, are kind of going out the other side into the information age. And because the information age is making humanity more of a, a village than it ever has been before because we communicate. You know, we have an internet and now when some place has a Tusami and 100,000 people get killed instead of saying, yeah, where is that place anyway? You know, we don't know. We don't care. It's just someplace out there and stuff happens and we don't relate to it. Now we do. Now we can look at the people. We can see the pain on their faces. We can look at the body stacked up and we can send them some money at the, to the Red Cross or somebody that's that's helping those people. So it makes a big difference in how we view each other. So you know, look at um, some time ago, there was a, you know, we had these, these two words that you were either a provincial or you were sophisticated. You were provincial, say, if you got born and never in your life got more than 100 miles away from where you were born. Okay, you had a very small perspective. Yeah. That's why we call it provincial, very small perspective. You couldn't really understand others and you figure everybody that wasn't like you was wrong. <laughs> Well, then you had people who traveled and not just traveled, like staying in five star hotels and moving to the next five star hotel, but actually traveled, you know, spent time in a country uh, interacting with the people and with that culture. And after doing that, we call them sophisticated because they had a much bigger picture, a much bigger reality. Well, the Internet's doing that to us. We don't yeah. have to get we don't have to get out of our chair and we're traveling we're all over the place seeing all sorts of things in different cultures different places and it's all available but like so what's that the makes ultimate it, goal yeah that makes here. a really big difference so the, the ultimate goal here is to get us to a point where we make big leaps in uh evolution good choices become the thing to do people understand their misery is mostly self-created they get that they, you know, they see the bigger picture. Well, our pictures keep getting bigger, you know, we're, we're getting bigger and bigger pictures. So I'm thinking that in another two, three, four decades, probably this century, we'll start taking bigger steps toward that goal. 
And I think it's going to kick off when the physics community finally yeah, comes that, to the conclusion that you know this is a virtual reality that this is a they won't say that but this is an information based reality they do say that and eventually that will hit mainstream and when that gets mainstream there's going to be a lot of questions oh this is a virtual reality well who's the programmer and what's it all about and what's the point of it yeah. how do you win how do you win this game and those questions should lead to, if you just look at the logic, they'll they'll lead to where MBT goes, which is, you know, love is the answer. It's yeah. us, it's us here trying to evolve the quality of our consciousness. And when that happens, you can do so much better winning a game if you know what the game is, rather than just wandering around clueless on a playing field someplace well, wondering what's going on here. Like, won't people still want to uh just like dominate the vr and and say you know fewer and fewer people well fewer once they and grow fewer people yeah once they grow up there'll be fewer and fewer people that want to do that sure there's always going to be some the problem now is those people that want to dominate are in the majority you know they're in the yeah. majority you uh you know you, you you take some ceo of a multi-billion dollar corporation and replace him with some guy who only makes twenty thousand dollars a year you know and you just switch those two and before long the guy that used to make two thousand you know twenty thousand dollars a year he's as he's as big a tyrant as right. as the one you replaced him with because right. most of us are like that well eventually most of us are not going to be like that and when we're not these other people will change too because it'll be so obvious then that peace tranquility caring happiness feeling satisfied feeling good about it. get up in the morning and think wow another another day wonderful instead of oh my god i gotta go to work this is awful you know it yeah. that's just better yeah and it'll be obvious when you get even 10 percent of the people are like that that's going to be obvious that that's so a it's way a to, small percentage at this point you see a very small percentage of people I see a who are, small percentage of people like that now right yeah. just a, just maybe a few percent but I think in maybe another um you know four five decades that'll shift we'll get more and more people will become aware of this and I think that awareness will blossom once the what I call the high priests of western culture which are yeah. the, the physicists once they say, yes, this is an information based reality, which equates logically to a virtual reality, yeah. that that will start forcing people to ask questions and to to think bigger thoughts. And this is going on in many different VRs, right? Like this whole process is taking place in many different VRs. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't say many like thousands, but many, yeah, like dozens and several dozen, I guess, that I've been in. So other than that, some are worse, some are better. Many. Some are a little more evolved than us. Some mostly they're not quite as evolved as us. We're doing pretty well. We're right at that sweet spot now, that that near the curve where, you know, it's and like the, the done, industry. Where's the done reality in all of this? The done reality is just another virtual reality that the, the system puts people when they when they no longer want to participate. You know, when they when they feel like they're done, you know, I'm I'm already evolved. You know, I have low entropy. I'm perfect already. I don't need any more of this stuff. Let me out of here. Was that a kind of a nice place to be for a while, though? Or no? Well, you know, it's polite. It's a polite place to be, but it's it's polite in the same way that uh, you know you you you've probably heard of the Game of Thrones and other movies right. about uh, basically times, what, a thousand years ago, you know, back in the warlord days. Well, the, the nobility then were very polite, right. but they were also ruthless and, you know, would cut each other's throats and were constantly warring and, and fussing with each other. So, so it's not that, like a perfect that, place. No, that place was very polite and nice and genteel but they were cliques and there were those people who were better than other people and it was starting to you know de-evolve and as those people realized they were de-evolving they they'd leave it right but that they'd was come the, back here yeah they'd come back here and get back to work 
Because you see, if you have this attitude that this, this you know, is, I, it, I don't really. want to be here. Yeah, if, if it's like, I don't want to be here anymore. You know, this hellhole just, just sucks and I don't want to participate. Well, <laughs> you know, you're part of the problem because yeah. that's all negativity. Yeah. You're, you're part of what's creating this thing being the way it is. Can you do it just by brute force? Like, can you can you improve just by brute force, just by saying, I'm going to be positive, damn it, and I'm just going to do it. And anytime that I'm negative, I'm going to force myself to be positive, and eventually that's going to turn yes, into a, absolutely. So What's you can that? brute force it you if can you have to. Yes, you can brute force it. Matter of fact, that's what happens when I tell people that want to get rid of their fear, the most important thing they can do is have a very strong intent to get rid of it. That's the brute force you're talking about. I mm -hmm. really want to get rid of it. And if you really want to get rid of it and you see yourself being negative, you're starting to feel stressed or anxious or annoyed, then you catch yourself and say, whoop, don't want to go there. And you back up and, and, and don't go down that path. And it may take you a year or two of that, but eventually, It'll get easier and easier not to go down that path, and pretty soon, you uh, you've outgrown those fears. And now, when when those harsh things come, and you get cheated, or you get used, or you know you get slapped, or whatever it is, you don't deal with it in a negative way. You don't get angry. You don't get upset, and you're not anybody's doormat. You are actually more powerful than you were when you were fussing and fuming and, and you know, getting angry. Right, because that's another thing. I don't think that, uh, like, not necessarily being be, being meek isn't necessarily no. the answer. Just going, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay. No, okay, that's not whatever it at all. you say, whatever yeah. you say, I'll yeah. do it. No, meekness is not, is not uh, one of the major ingredients. That's not it. When you, when you are low entropy, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you become everybody's doormat. Matter of fact, it's just the opposite. You become much more powerful. Um, as an example, look at the people in the world that have actually made a big difference worldwide. You know, an individual person actually changes the way people all over the world think and feel and act. And who would these people be? Gandhi, Martin Luther King, um, um guy in south africa oh nelson mandela nelson mandela oh you can think some of these people they made huge changes yeah not only changes in attitudes in their local you know country or their local environment but all over the world and what what did they all have in common they, they were, were they were beings of love they were caring right. yeah. they they weren't angry they didn't uh, nelson mandela said oh you put me in prison for 20 years so you know we're gonna we're just going to rip you guys and you know and get even. That wasn't it. Same with the, with Martin Luther King. You know, it wasn't about uh, just black people. It was black and white people learning to work together. You know, see each other as as equal and and partners. Not that's what he that's where he was going. So you look at at uh, the people who really have had power. Yeah, and and you'll find that it's those people. You have more power when you're positive. People want to be around you. People like you. People want to hang out with you. People value what you say. We you just need it. to start valuing that more as a society, I guess, in, in order for that to to exactly. really take hold. And is there something that uh, like as, as an IUOC, as, as a, and I know you have to go soon, um, as an IUOC, do we have things to look forward to that are, I mean, obviously doing this work is very important. It's pretty much the most important thing, I guess, that we can be doing for the system. But uh, I mean, is there growth that's happening in that side of things too? I mean, like if we're outside of a VR and we're not necessarily incarnated or whatever connected to an avatar, are we taking on respon other responsibilities? Are we, you know, is there other are there other ways basically to to help the system? I mean, I know you talk about the big cheese. He's kind of. Uh, you know, upper management or something like that. Yeah. Does he have people who are working with him and and uh... not much? The organizations are pretty slim and pretty flat. But yeah, the the the, the virtual reality. Uh, what do we? I'll just call them uh, entropy reduction trainers. 
those virtual realities that have tight rule sets that that uh, have uh, very tight causalities, that's the place. They were designed to help IUOCs grow up. That's what they were designed to do. And that's the place where you can grow up more quickly than any place else. So it doesn't have to be this virtual reality of, you know, this physical universe. It could be some other virtual reality. But that kind of a setting is the fast track in evolution. Now, nobody ever forces you to do anything, particularly you have free will. You can go back in a chat room and just hang out if you want. That's okay, but you won't grow much. You'll just sit there and after a while, you'll feel like you're missing the boat and you'll go get involved again in one of these virtual realities. So yeah, you can sit out if you want. You can, uh, you can just take a breather if that suits you. But for most of the entities that I've seen do that, that doesn't last very long. Pretty soon they get bored with sitting out. Yeah. It just isn't. It just isn't interesting. It, it's, they don't learn. They're not growing, and it gets really dull and boring very quickly. So they get back. That. They get back in the mix, even though it's it's tough here. But it's tough because we make it tough. If we would just grow up, it wouldn't be tough here. It was really delightful. It's here. really funny, actually. I heard one time that uh, when you open the hood of the universe, it's just an elastic band or something. <laughs> uh, I can't remember where I heard that, but I I get the sense more and more that because um, I've been interested in using some of these other techniques myself for really actually now I kind of view them more as potential tools for helping myself grow up here. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but it just all seems so insanely simple to the point that uh it's just like we're already here we're already doing it there's not much more we're already kind of in the most interesting thing that mm -hmm. that there is but we're always looking at other at other things thinking it's going to be this uh jewel or something right grass always looks greener on the yeah. other side of the fence right yeah sure that's uh yeah that's because we don't realize that you know it's really us, we have to make the change, a better environment, you know, a nicer place, uh, you know, more money in the bank, um, you know, nice, nice people, rather than nasty people to be around. If, you know, if we just could make those changes, if we could just fix things in our environment to be the way we wanted, well, we'd be happy and everything would be great. But that's just not true. And when we when we actually succeed at that, and end up wealthy or end up whatever, we find out we're just as miserable as we were yeah. because that's not that's not the point you know yeah. it's not that wealthy people are happy people you know that's not like that you can be happy and be wealthy they're not incompatible but wealth doesn't buy happiness happiness is a byproduct of of lowering your entropy of making and good kind choices. of by the same token uh um i know you said at one point you were you were figuring things out by being in an Eastern place and then being in a Western place, but being a monk somewhere and removing yourself from everything isn't also isn't necessarily going to do so much. You no. might feel, you might feel good and peaceful and stuff, but in actuality, right. you, might re you really might actually not be. Yeah. You, you may think that you're a lot more grown than you are because you don't have this constant challenges going on to see whether you're really grown. You know, when you yeah. sit in a, when you go to, meditate and sit in a cave and you don't interact with anyone, well, it's easy to act like you're grown up. But when when you get around a lot of people and somebody steps on your foot or you know, yeah. throws uh, cold water in your face yeah, or something, right. then you, you, you know, that that acting suddenly uh, you get upset, you get yeah. angry and so on. And that says it's just not very grown up at all. It's easy to act grown up in a in a cloistered place where you're never challenged. But when you're never challenged, it's like being in this in a chat room. Well, okay, there's nothing negative ever going on. It's always kind of nice and polite, pretty much, but there's nothing really positive going on either you know, is, is the problem. So you end up having to get out and mix it up in one of these virtual realities that is a rough place. But you can be happy here. It's not like anybody who here is miserable. That's not it at all. There's lots of happy people live here. But these are people who are not self centered. And yeah. these are people who uh, care and are compassionate. And like I say, those people are, are the powerful people. It's the people who lie, cheat and steal that are the weak people. 
So you growing up really puts you in a much better space and a much more powerful space to be in. People and are really right where they need to be, I guess, all, really. Everybody's basically right where they are, and you know, right where I shouldn't say where they need to be, but mm, that's probably a good that's yeah. probably a good way to say it. You know, you come in here with a certain quality of consciousness. I think Whatever that's you, actually an interesting way yeah. to put it, though, because right where you are is different from where you need to be, and where you are is okay. Right. Yeah, where you are is okay. You can't help that. You know, we don't we don't look at children and call them dysfunctional adults. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't look at your six year old and say, wow, what a dysfunctional adult. We say well, they're children, they are the, what they are. Okay, children are very yeah. self centered. That's just natural for children. They're going to grow up, they'll grow out of it. You know, so you have to say the same with everybody else that's out here in the world, you know, they just yeah. are where they are, because that's what they've been able to manage for what they came in with. And maybe they'll next if they learn and make some good choices here next time they'll start off at a little higher level and so on and they'll work that they will work themselves up. Uh, if they make terrible choices, then they'll come back and they'll be at a little lower level and now they're gonna have to dig out of the hole that they just dug for themselves. Um, I, I, I uh, just want to say thanks so much for talking to me I, I don't really. Um, it's just a joy to talk to you and uh, I also wanted to say thanks for everything you've done. Um, I, there's a lot of value in it. There's so much value in it. It's unbelievable actually how much value you've provided, I think, mm -hmm. to a lot of people. Um, I also have enjoyed quite a bit Tom's park. And oh, have you gotten that? I have. I've, have, I've you, have you, have you found I've, that useful? I have found it useful, even in the sense that I've struggled with it a bit conceptually, just, uh, you know, as you say, inquiring egos want to know, I have a lot of curiosity. <laughs> and, um, but there's been some times where I've had a glimpse into kind of how you say things are, and I've just kind of had to accept, you know, what it is. And uh, the times where I've been able to do that have been very fun and very interesting. And I, I find that being there is a, is a really easy way for me to deal with uh, negativity that uh that i have because i i become aware of it there and it's for whatever reason in that imaginative space it's a lot easier for me to let go of the negativity that i become aware of when i'm there mm -hmm. um and so i have uh, benefited from it uh quite a bit and um i, th I just think it's a really interesting cool like uh, very very unique thing that you've done and uh, I just, it's awesome. I just think it's so cool that, that you, uh, that you did that and came up with it and, and put it out there mm. for people. And actually the, the wallpaper on my computer is the, the map that Justin uh, <laughs> made. Justin did. Yeah. 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 Well, I created that because I wanted a, a better way, an easier way for some of the students I've had that I've been trying to teach them uh, how to uh, develop their intuitive side and and get into the paranormal world because that's just opens up more choices it's another place to grow <clears throat> and they've struggled and struggled and struggled with it and their intellect keeps them from succeeding that intellect keeps getting in the way so i wanted a way that didn't have a stark transition between here and there you know if you want to go out of body and it's like well am i still here or am I there, you know, and there's this big gap, because the intellect always wants to assess that transition, which kills the process of getting right. into the intuitive side, because the intuitive yeah. side, you, you don't, you don't do logic or assessments on the intuitive side, you just experience on the intuitive side, it's, yeah. it's a it's a beyond logic uh, place. So in any case, uh, I wanted something that that got rid of that transition, because that's where everybody got stuck. They want to talk to their dead Uncle Fred. That's fine. So they go into a meditation state and they call up Uncle Fred. And then they're right. You know, is that really yeah. Uncle Fred? There's this this transition to where it isn't or it is. And that's where the intellect would would trash their experience. So I did the Tom's Park to not have that in Tom's Park. You start with your imagination. And when that imagination starts to take on a life of its own, it doesn't have to suddenly 
take on 100% of a life of its own, it can maybe be only 10%. Yeah, that's and then right. Maybe 20%. And then maybe 50 percent. You see it. You can be partly your imagination and partly getting a data stream from someplace else. So there's no right. there's no sudden transition. So you just kind of slip slide into the space where you're no longer intentionally making it up. It's just happening. So it's essentially and just another VR, right? It's so another it VR. Absolutely. And once you get to that point where you're not you're not actively making it up anymore, it just has has a life on its own. Well, you're out of body. You're in some other VR out right. of body. And from there, you can do lots of other things. And I have various places in a park that can launch you off to do other things. Yeah. So it's it's a it was a way to get people to the outer body or to the paranormal, or if you want to say just to develop their intuitive side without having to have this big transition from not there to there. Does the big is, cheese really have uh, meetings in the uh, in the lodge? <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's a lot of humor and fun in there, too. You know, you can't you can't all be serious. So uh, no, the big cheese doesn't have to have meetings in the lodge. His meetings can all just be mind to mind. You know, he doesn't need phys he doesn't need a, a a virtual reality to give him physical space. So, anyway, uh, but you know, you have to have fun too. You know, you can't be but so serious, or otherwise it doesn't work well. Right. It has to be fun. It has to be light. It has to be easy. The harder you try the less likely you are to succeed, which is just the opposite of the way it is in this reality. In this reality, the more you, harder you try, the more yeah. likely you are to succeed. Which is and why then, it's so difficult for, that's for why people it's so to difficult. think about uh, doing that stuff. It's like, is it real? Is it, yeah. is it really a space? Is it really a this? Is it really a that? Uh, I think about that all the time. I really do. I think yeah. about that. But when I went, there have been a few times where I've been able to let go and just let my imagination run wild and just take it for what it is. And, yeah. and those have been, I don't, I can't, I don't know what those experiences were. I don't I have, that's part of the thing that's so yeah. difficult about it is because uh, I had an interaction with someone there uh, at, at one point and I, uh, I was talking to someone at the information booth. And uh -huh. uh, it was just really interesting because uh, it just kind of happened out of nowhere. It, it, and, um, and then you think about it later and you're like, what the heck? What was going on there? Like, well, was, was that a real uh, interaction or was that just my imagination or what? Yeah, it was a real interaction. If you got past the point where you were actively making it up, that's a real interaction. You're in another virtual, you're in a virtual reality. And that virtual reality has, you know, a lake and, uh, you know, a lodge. It's got all kinds of things in it and horses that talk. And it's a virtual reality with rules. Yeah. And you can, it, your interaction and the choices you make and the, the way you express yourself in that reality will help you evolve just as much as it does in this reality. Yeah. Any, any virtual reality you're in and you make a choice, that's that's a choice to weird toward you know evolving or de-evolving depending and on the, the quality of that great. choice the humor is fantastic i gotta say i think i think you're a really funny guy just in general <laughs> i really think that your uh comedy is is uh pretty funny and uh i the humor in it is 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 uh just awesome and even in the park itself uh the humor there is is very light and airy place and uh, it, it it's funny. I'm glad that humor is like a part of uh, yeah. what's going on because yeah. it's just a fantastic thing. Whatever humor is, it's a wonderful yeah. mechanism. Well, it has to it has to be light because if you're trying, that's your intellect. Your intellect wants to solve the problem. Your intellect wants to say, well, here's the recipe for getting from here yeah. to there. Yeah. So I'll do one, two, three, step four, and then I'm there. But you never get there because your intellect can't go into that that intuitive space. Your intellect has to stay behind yeah. that space. You just experience. Yeah. It's just an experience space. And the experience is just as real and just as significant as it is in this virtual reality. It's is there no a less mechanism? Real. Actually, I just 
I'm just curious now, is there a mechanism that, cause I, a lot of times I'll fall asleep after a while, but uh, it, it'll even be like, I'll just fall asleep after 25 minutes and I could be in the park doing a bunch of stuff or wherever. And I'll eventually I'll just fall asleep. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's longer than others before that point kind of comes. But I was just curious, is there a mechanism that like, I guess it's just our stamina or something, right? In that kind yeah, of it, exercise? Well, it's, you have to stay busy. You have to stay focused on what you're doing. You have to right. be doing something. When you decide that, oh, let me just sit on this bench and watch, you know, the birds fly by, or let me just disengage and just be here for a while. That's when you tend to fall asleep. As long as you're doing something, interacting, connecting, uh, involved, then you tend to not fall asleep. But when you when you let go of it all, then typically you fall asleep. Yeah, yeah. It's just great. My, my favorite part about it is that it's easy to get rid of negative thoughts when you're there. It's very, very easy. It's in that space for whatever reason. It's and I, I that is a uh, very cool. Very, very yeah, well, cool well, it's a very safe space. And it's a very positive space. And several times in the instructions, I tell people that if you find negativity there, it's because you bring it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you can be aware of that because you're in this very positive pace. And then if something is negative, it dawns on you right away. Oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah. I brought that. I brought that negativity in there. I need to let that go. Yeah. So that's why it makes it easy because yeah. it is a it is a positive space. Yeah, it's but just yes, awesome. It's it's as real. You know, you wonder, well, what was that? I still don't know what that was. Well, it's just as real as it is here. It's just different. Mm. It's just you interacting in a different reality frame. Mm. And it's just as real, just as important, just as significant as anything you do here. Yeah, that's that's I think that's very interesting to to just to hear that. And I think when people hear that, sometimes that's all someone needs just to, to, to then tell their own mind, oh, actually, you, all of a sudden you can kind of put your own perspective on things into a slightly different viewpoint, you know, mm -hmm. which can also then affect your perspective on what you're doing here. Absolutely. Um, at times. And I guess that gets easier and easier over time, because at the beginning, you might say, you know, in an easy situation here, it's easy, a bit easier to shift your perspective as the situations get more difficult. It's harder and harder to shift yeah. your perspective. But anyway, um, I could go on and on and talk to you for the rest of the day, probably, <laughs> and just take up all of your time. But I'm not going to do that. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing just fine. We, uh, Mitch and I are just getting uh, wrapping up a, a uh, I don't know whether it's an interview. I think it's more of just a conversation. <laughs> yeah. A 10 on 10. Even, yeah. Yeah, we're just finishing up. Wanted you to come in and say hi. That's great, uh, Mitch. I really appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, Tom actually met Mitch through uh, MBT. So we uh, wouldn't have connected if it wasn't for you. And Mitch has been uh, a humorous and invaluable <laughs> resource <laughs> when it comes to one man's journey, one, uh, as you say, individuated unit of consciousness's journey, trying to just ascertain what the heck is going on around here. <laughs> What the heck's going on? So yeah, Mitch and I have had, I'm sure, you know, I can't wait to, um, I can't wait to watch what you guys have uh, uh, chatted about. I think I you'll mean, like the conversation, Matt. We had a good chat. Very good chat. That's, that's so good. I yeah. had asked Mitch, uh, Tom, uh, I know you probably, you know, with the thousands of hours that you have out there for, for people to consume and, and delve into, Mitch has definitely looked at probably all of it. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> he, I've looked at quite a bit and I found you through one of my friends, Peter Yurt. Um, he's a fellow artist and uh, performer. Uh, he has a band called Hell Bros, which is really cool, but we're, we're both in film and television and i remember we were having one of these conversations that uh, artists do you know what's going on out there what's happening and he goes have you ever heard of a guy named tom campbell i said no i said who's that dude and he said this is going to blow your mind <laughs> and, and that was that was like 10 uh 12 i think it was 2009 or 2010 uh -huh. and i was I, I just, I was absolutely blown away with the possibility of even a fraction of what you were saying to be true and, and something that stuck with me over the years. And I, I still keep it to this day. It's like a cattle brand in my, in my brain, which is be skeptical, 
but be yeah. open-minded. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you've, you've been a really positive uh, force in both of our, our lives, Tom. And uh, yeah. it's uh, led to a lot of, we really appreciate your authenticity and uh, how genuine you are and, uh, and, and just how you're just a nice guy. Really good. <laughs> you just seem like a really good guy to both yeah. of us. Yeah. And uh, it's, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. Well, that's yeah. great. That's exactly what I am. I'm just another guy. <laughs> and uh, I enjoy talking to people and helping them out if I can. And yeah. so it's it's all fun. Absolutely. Well, we'll we'll let you go. Um, I know you have to you have to get going. You probably do you have another uh, conversation you're going I to? do. Yeah, I have another conversation coming up shortly. Yeah. Well, uh, please uh, uh, pass on my gratitude to Pamela as well for uh doing the emailing back and forth okay i will i will she'll appreciate that well thank you thank you again so much tom and i hope you i hope you have a great uh rest of your day okay i will you too Thanks. see you guys bye, bye, bye matthew bye mitch bye, tom.